Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. Here I have one of the tiny Tektronix series 222 oscilloscopes. And I thought just as a kind of try new stuff out video, like I have a new camera and I will acquire a different type of uh, microphone soon, I would like to check this out if we can add a second probe to this scope or better build a replacement scope because as you can see these scopes have kind of special tiny little oscilloscope probes which are rather hard to find they are in it's essentially just a standard normal probe with a bnc coupling at the end and the other part of the cabling is permanently attached to the scope inside of here which is an odd design choice in my opinion as it makes finding replacement probes for these <laughs> very very hard these probes are usually the same price as a complete scope with two probes so it is absolutely not worth the, the money to just buy a new probe. So what I thought is um, I have some older probes. For example, I, let's put this to the side for a moment. For example, this Tektronix type, what is it? It's a P2220, which is a pretty nice probe. Um, this one is, as you can see, quite substantially bigger. Um, also, I do not have the ground clip for this one. Uh, but maybe I could open it in the back and add like an alligator clip. Basically the same way they did it with this scope probe. Um, but then I noticed, yeah, it could be could be hard because I noticed you can just unscrew these probes and you have this weird kind of connector system in here. So to basically get the ground probe attached, you would have to drill somewhere inside of here and connect it somewhere or slice open this uh, bendy part and solder onto this, which I would try to avoid because I only have two of these probes and I mm -hmm. kind of like using them. The other one has, of course, a ground clip. Um, so I looked through my stash and I noticed I have like a metric shit ton of these Rigold probes for whatever reason. It is a RP2200 <clears throat> and well, even though it's a kind of basic probe, it will totally be fine for the scope. So I think we should try to butcher this one. As I, as I said, I, have, I think there are 12 of these hanging on my door right now. Um, I think we should try to butcher this one instead of the tectronics one first. So what I already noticed is the glue from this tip cover is failing. So let's just remove that and also get this ground clip off. Then we can put this sleeve thing back, but I will probably add some heat shrink to uh, cover this part later on. Also, I might try to grind down this rim to make it a bit more compact because even though this one is a tad smaller than the Tektronics one, the, the bigger one, it's still a bit, a bit bigger than the small tech probes. So also we need to shorten this wire. Maybe we can open this some way um, which does not feel like it is playing along nicely. Um, but if we can open this, maybe we can short it inside 
somehow and pull it through this uh, bending protection thing. Otherwise, I would have to cut it and make a new BNC connection on there somehow, which I don't think I have at hand, but well, we will see. So let's first try to open this without impaling myself on this rather pointy tip, which does not seem to go very well. So let's use a bit brute force to get inside of here. Uh, as we will add the alligator clip, it is not strictly a problem if we mangle this part of it, as we have to drill it into it or open it anyway, somehow. So I guess we can don't really have a problem with nibbling around here a bit. Also, I might cut this wire already now because this is annoyingly in the way. And we would cut it to roughly there. So let's keep nibbling. Oh, and while I'm recording on a PC now, um, I might use the opportunity to be able to just quickly push a button on this keyboard and pause. So using some um, completely forceless methods of persuasion, I managed to at least nibble away a bit of this bendy protection thing. And we uncovered a metal sheath. So let's see if this one connects to the ground port or part order, whatever. For this, we will today choose the Tel DM1000 multimeter, a marvelous device. Very, very modern device. Also, we need to make sure that there is no short circuit inside of our place where we cut that. So let's see. It should make a beep. Why you know I did switch it off. Yeah, we have a very, very precise and beautiful beep. As you can see, absolutely no residual resistance in these high professional leads. So first let's see if we have a connection here. No, so there is no fault. And now let's see if we can just solder onto this part. Uh, yes, we can. It is also, as you can see, almost, almost zero ohms basically just the wire resistance. Yeah, this is a good start, I would say. So let's switch on the soldering iron, which I should have done before, but I did not. So, soldering iron at hand. And let's see, take the good Bleiwerke Gosler l -Sold. And where do we want to have that in regards to this switch? I would say if it goes out right on top, this would be a very good way. So you do not interfere with the button or switch while you are holding the prop. So let's just try to solder onto this here. Ideally, without melting half of the probe, that would be very nice and beneficial. Uh, it is taking solo. Yeah, it does. Nice. Nice. I like that. Who it stinks. Oh, by the way, this camera has a zoom. Let's see. And this was the wrong one. Let's see 
if I can give you a bit of better view on that. Just have to make sure that I stay in frame. Also, we want to try to mimic the length, which is just a tad more than the connector. So we go with that as well. I chose a very shitty alligator clip. One side isn't closing properly. Properly, as you can see, it's a bit sideways. So we use that one, which is a bit less sideways, but still not very good. Well, it'll be fine for the scope. So let's snip that. And what a cool one. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> this, is the, this is the tiniest wire ever. At least it has at least six strands. <laughs> That's better than many I have seen. <laughs> Even though this isolation uh, promises a bit more. So I guess you can say this is a high voltage rated cable, <laughs> but definitely not high current. Yeah, let's just make a big fat blob. This will be perfect. Yeah, we all like the blob. So now we need to re-insulate this somehow and make it look at least somehow or somewhat nice-ish. Take some heat shrink for that. This looks like old chocolate. Uh, I think we need the old chocolate. Yeah, we need that. Nice. Maybe like that. Just make it a bit shorter. Roughly half. And yes, there's a lot of stuff cluttering around, so please excuse these strange noises if you can hear these. It's good enough. Let's take a professional tool to shrink these. So this looks not too shabby. It definitely feels nice in the hands, especially since it's a bit warm. <laughs> so should we try to grind off a bit of this ring? I think we should. So because that is making a lot of awful noises, I will do this off camera and pause for a moment again. So I have ground down this ring. It feels still very nice in the hand. Also, I used the appropriate tool to smooth out this part again a bit after grinding. This also blended the colors a bit. We can try to use an even more appropriate tool to make this a bit nicer, so we shall do that. Uh, no, this was not a great idea. This, uh, well, let's pretend we never did that. Um, yeah, great ideas uh, don't always work, obviously. 
Yes, so I tried to uh, regrind a bit to get rid of that coloration that uh, did absolutely not accidentally happen. Uh, or, well, <laughs> we just pretended it wasn't happening at all. So um, just ignore that and we should put a cover over here so we don't get bitten by whatever ground we or whatever we have on the ground clip. For that, I shall definitely not use the green device, but instead, again, this one, trying not to burn away my fingers. What? 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 So, right now, it doesn't look too nice, but it feels really, really nice in the end. I'd say it feels even better than the original one. I'm sure you could probably grind this with a finer stone or whatever, but I'm way too impatient for that, and uh, I hate grinding, and I'm not good at it, as you might notice. So we will not do that. Now let's try to find a connector to put over here because uh, I tried in the beginning to remove this bendy protection. It is absolutely impossible without completely obliterating the probe. So let's see what we can do. So what I found is a crimpable BNC connector which should, well, absolutely not fit this cable in any way, but we might be able to make it fit. Let's see. At first, we need to, uh, we, we might want to try it out first if we can even solder to this wire. So for that, we can use the old one or the cut off part and see how that behaves. Oh, this gets off very easy. That is very nice. So, is this shield solderable? Let's see. Also, is the inner part solderable? Wow. This is just the tiniest wire I've ever seen. It's just took the first place from this alligator clip. Let go of my solder sponge thing. Thank you. So this is probably solderable? Question mark. I have absolutely no idea if, it, if that soldered. Maybe, maybe not. And this, oh, this works very good. Okay. I am hopeful that we can maybe get that to work. Put that aside, put this over. Also put some heat shrink over, which I lost somehow. Eh, take a new one. I think we need to use the good old electrician's tape, of course, in an appropriate color, which is Definitely not red. We take this is this is a very appropriate color. We take that one, and we need to have that hmm, almost the length of the 
almost the length of one width of this tape. Nice. And just give it a little touch of solder. And let's see if we can solder this into here. Wait, before we do that, we put this on. No, wait, before we do that, we put this on. Then we put that on. Do we? Yes, we do. And a bit of this. Well, no, it should be crimpable. If not, I have to solder it. So, put some solder onto that. And try to solder it here. Which actually seems to have worked. Surprising. Yeah, that worked. So now let's put some of the tape around there to make that a bit so that it sits nicely inside of that cavity. And also I will put a, just a tiny bit on the tip so that it hopefully does not break off with the slightest movement. Let's see if that is enough or maybe too much. No, it looks just about right. But I would love for it to just fit in there. That would be very helpful. Ah, there it is. There it is. Hello, Mr. Connector. Oh, no, we put actually too much on here. No, damn it. Ow. Ouch, I struck a leak. Who did I hit there? It's hurt. Okay, it's still not in. Cool. So maybe it is not meant to go all the way in. Hmm. Ouch. No. Well, whatever. Let's reattach this shielding. Or at least try to somehow make that fit on here. Which would usually be made in a different way if I wouldn't be the biggest idiot while doing that. And just for reference, this is definitely not the proper way to terminate these connectors. But to be honest, I don't really care right now. I just want this to kind of work. It's not meant for serious measurement tasks. As you hopefully have already guessed, noticed, assumed, whatever. So let's put this in here and try to crimp it. Which size shall we try? That one. Oh, no, this was way too big. Try again. A 
let's just pretend this is whatever that is made for. And that is surprisingly good on there. Wow. I did totally not expect that. Okay. So let's put this on. Give that a little shrink. That looks, well, it, it looks pretty shitty, but it looks usable at least. I hope. Now, let's take again the good old tail meter and see if we have a perfect connection. Let's try just first from here to here. Oh, we have negative resistance compared to before. Okay, now we have a good contact, obviously, in these crappy probes. Nice. So let's try from the ground point to here. Now we again have 15 ohms, okay, for whatever reason. And now let's try to get to this part and the tip. 50 ohms. <laughs> Okay, so this is not perfect, but I would say reasonable enough <laughs> to try to replicate one of these tectonics probes. Yeah, last thing is to try it out. I would say. So I have connected and propped up the little tectronic scopes. Scope, scopes, scope, it's just one. Um, but sadly, I did not have a second of these BNC couplers. So we cannot display both probes at the same time. So we just have to start with the original one. I connect that to the output of my toner frequency generator. If I manage to, because the original ground probe is, or ground clip is very, very stiff. So connect that. And as you can see, we have around an amplitude of, what is that, 10 volts? Or 20 watts peak peak, which is roughly what it should be, and a frequency of around it's roughly one kilohertz. So let's swap over to the second probe. Just disconnect this one and connect our self-made one, and let's see if we fucked up. So put that here. Ground clip is way nicer and, oh wait, we are on times one. Let's go to times 10. Okay. Times one, we are way, way, way off from an amplitude standpoint. So they must have some kind of internal scaling in these probes. Uh, that would be, <laughs> would have been nice to know before. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah. So we have, what is this? 30 volts peak peak. So we have a 
factor of one and a half. Nice. Ah, don't we love that? But at least the frequency is perfectly fine and we also do not have some strange glitches or whatever. So in general, this seems to work. So I found the reason. The Tektronix probes have a 560, well, technically a 666 kilo ohms resistor in series. Um, off cam, I have both of these probes connected to the signal generator, and the uh, self made probe has a, a 560 kilo ohm series resistor now. I'll disable the second channel so we don't get distracted. So, original probe, self-made probe over 560k, original, self-made plus resistor. I would say that is a good result. And just for completeness sake, this is the setup I have on the function generator. And I think I will just, as I said, I have massive amounts of these props. I will just make a second one. And instead of soldering these tiny cables into that, uh, that tip, I will just put a resistor wire in there, as it is also massively thicker. So then I can crimp the contact as it is supposed to be and solder the other side of the resistor cable to the inner conductor of this uh, this tiny whatever that is cable yeah that will work for now